Excellent. Well, thank you again for joining us tonight, because I know uh, you were one of the original members of this this venture, this initiative, correct? Yes, indeed. Uh, from the beginning, an original member with Sonny Jane and all the others that we got started, you know, it was his vision that began with pretty much his wedding, if you believe it or not. Uh, he gathered. Oh, that's up- awesome. Yeah, he uh, so the Barat is a uh, procession and Indian wedding that begins the day where the, the groom gets on a, a horse with his family in the streets and goes to the bride's home. And it's a lot of joyous dancing in the streets sure. and drumming in the streets and so on. It's led by the dole drum, which Sonny, Sonny plays. Yeah, uh, that's that drum he's holding where it ha- it's played on both ends Yeah, right there. Exactly. So he got a bunch of friends together to play some things he arranged for the wedding. And then it was such a uh, you know, success uh, and a successful contribution to his wedding. He's like, huh, <laughs> an idea. And soon, you know, soon thereafter, he gathered up some friends to to make Red Barat. Um, it had those elements, but we were all coming at this music with different uh, backgrounds, right? Like uh, from jazz to hip hop to funk to reg, you know, reggae. Like we all had their various experiences. So we all kind of started to flavor and find pivot points. Like the, the Bhangra style has certain shuffle feel and triplet feel that, that lends itself well to other American dance styles. So we were dipping into all these other kind of um, nuances, you know, so, and that's how we kind of got going with that. That must be cool when you create, when you have those epiphanies, you're like, wait, this very Eastern sound has a matchup with this Western sound. Let's do it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's um, very cool. Yeah. Those, those are fun, fun little moments of like, Aha. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This will work. Um, maybe take a moment uh, for some people, because obviously we're talking about the sousaphone, which is your instrument. Yeah. I think most people see that and I mean, instantly think tuba. So like, do you want to talk about that at all? Like the difference and so that people yeah. can have an understanding that that's well, the sousaphone, it. Yeah. And tuba, they're, they're very similar. One mm-hmm. is a more has a more or- orchestral European tradition. One is sousaphone here is made in America. It has more of a New Orleans and marching band tradition. Um, and that's a difference. So therefore it was made, invented by John Philip Sousa, hence the name. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it wraps around you so you can move with it. You march in a parade or a second line in New Orleans. Oh, very interesting. Gotcha. Body. So it was designed that way so that you can essentially walk with it and move with it. Yeah. Uh, the tuba is coiled up, so you kind of more sedentary. You sit with it; it sits on your lap or on Got your it. legs, and it's harder to walk with. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine so. You were talking about the sousaphone and the tuba. You know, what was your introduction to music, um, and why did you then specialize in those instruments that you know they're very common in the musical world, but you know, for for the lay person, right. that's not an instrument that you see out there in pop music so, so much. So, what was your kind of path yeah it's, it's fascinating so my, my dad's a, a trumpet player and a band director i'm from like the north bronx where the board of the bronx area and he taught at truman high school for decades as a band director and he was also a tri-state area trumpet player catskill mountain band leader as well in those hotel chain for many decades so i grew up with music around the house brass around the house i started out on trumpet and then i got braces and it was too painful <laughs> to play on the small mouthpiece of the trumpet I went to the bigger mouthpieces of trombones and tubas and, and you know, really went with it from there. Um, went up to the Eastman School of Music in Rochester on tuba. And, you know, um, also my dad at some point, what was really cool, I think I was taking a summer program and I was asked, talking to him about classes to take with the summer program I was going to do. And I had the choice between like European music history or world music history and like and he's like ah the, the european stuff you'll get in college take the world stuff mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. my first kind of exposure to uh through taking that class like music from bali from africa from the middle east from latin Certainly. Africa, you know and all these more specific instruments that are more indigenous and, and so on and these dances that are from these areas so that started to get in my ears early on too you know and, and just inform more of my my progress from there so it was just brass was around the house and um yeah i think as a class so what's funny is classical tuba it's like you think about it there's only so many orchestras there's only one tuba per orchestra if you're thinking about it from a classical perspective but once that person gets that job they keep it for life pretty much you know (laughs) all these people are graduating as tuba players out into the world and there's not enough jobs for them so Mm -hmm. 
players are among the more creative people. You got to really got to find and carve out your own way and find your own, take initiative and in finding a, a path that you're going to kind of take a machete to and, and make. So Reparat's part of that for, for me. And I think other things I've done in my career kind of resemble that, like putting this instrument, uh, which typically was just found in a marching band or in an orchestra yeah. and mm -hmm. making it fit and envisioning it for other other projects, other sounds, playing it in a certain way that, you know, can... Uh, can... It's almost like you don't, like, you got, clearly you have rules, but you're kind of like, hey, this hasn't been done before, so let's see what happens, you know? Like, that must yeah. be interesting, too, to see exactly. to hear it play off other, other instruments. Exactly. So those are very beautiful, beautiful memories. Uh, Bonnaroo was such an incredible energy, you know, it was just to be amongst you know, literally 50 to 80,000 people. I, I don't even know the numbers. Wow. But, and like, and, and feel, feel that kind of energy going to re more remote places like Kazakhstan or mm -hmm. Caledonia, which is this island, you know, near New Zealand, um, out that way uh, as part of the WOMAD kind of festivals. Like those kind of destinations were like, wow, here I am. You zoom out and you see yourself and you see your bandmates and your project that you've, invested your heart and, and energy into and, and you've landed at this place and you're on stage in front of people in the middle of the pacific ocean you're like wow this is this is a beautiful <laughs> yeah a beautiful like, all because all because of your orthodontist you know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just amazing all... it's like a butterfly flaps its wings you know yep, it's just yep. it's wild it's how life happens right it's like perfect uh, i should get that t-shirt because of my orthodontist <laughs> yeah, <right>. thanks, <laughs> thanks doctor and i was sharing before this uh in our in our tap dance um <laughs> that uh like we all met and i heard you guys because you opened for carver commodore Mm -hmm. um, and that was where we kind of all got linked up. And then we've been chatting about this opportunity since November when I saw you guys play. Yeah. Yep. That's right. It's been a while. Long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've, been, we've been real busy since then, but I'm glad we made it work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, listen, you guys have had not just busy, but like the car broke down and all sorts of other <laughs> yeah. good stuff. You've been driving to the West Coast and then back to the East Coast. So it's been a, a wild ride for you guys uh, for yeah. quite some time now. Um, but probably the coolest part that you guys have going on is some really, really good music getting released, like, you know, drip by drip. I keep waiting for like a bigger release of, of an album, but awesome music coming out with songs like Mexico and, and cash and thank you, like some really good stuff. So anything you want to share there about, again, either those last couple of months or, or the new music? Well, there might be a little bit more, slightly more new music for the short term <laughs> and then more music later in the long term. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like Fair enough. <laughs> uh, but that's pretty much it. The takeaway is more ahead. music is coming. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. That is a very good so, thing. And, end so, of the month. And I think this might be a good, this was kind of where my question was going to be. So George, it actually lay, lays it up perfectly because it may actually answer your question. Um, you started out with uh, five people in the band where there was a saxophone player. Mm -hmm. And on that, I wanted to say the evolution of your sound, I think, not that I was happy to see the sax go, but like you've, I don't know, I don't want to use the word matured because it wasn't like you had an immature sound, but like the the evolution, let's use that word, of where your sound is today compared to was it back then, I think it's just become so interesting and unique. And it was what jumped out at me when I was listening to you. I was there to see, obviously, Carver Commodore, and I was listening to you guys open, and I'm like, these guys are awesome. So like, I just loved the sound. And that older sound with the sax, to me, almost sounds kind of like E Street Band Bruce Springsteen-ish. Yeah. And I don't yeah, know if that's what you're hearing. Off. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, and then even Avery, your, I wanted to specifically mention, like, your guitar playing went in a com totally different direction. Yeah. I don't know if there's even a story there, but, like, you get a completely unique sound out of that guitar in ways that I was like, is that, I almost thought it was a sample or a keyboard. Like, you're getting something to come out of a guitar that I've kind of never heard before. Well, that's really, uh, really complimentary. I really appreciate that. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, well, I guess the sound sort of, you know, unique in some way. I can thank, you know, my, my our good friend Preston, who helps, you know, record all of the guitar from the last several releases that we've done. I mean, he's just like a uh, super talent. So yeah, it's it's really nice. But yeah, it's 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 weird going from 
having two lead instruments that you kind of have to figure out how to deal with to just having a full like playground almost. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just decided I would forego any sort of technique and just beat the <laughs> shit the heck out of it. <laughs> yeah. But there, it, it, it's chaotic and it's, you know, it, 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 but in a good, like it, it, but it certainly has a plan to it. Like it's a song. It's not just riffing yeah, right. and, and whatnot. Like it's, it's really cool. I really recommend people check it out, especially this, you know, the, the, I think too, like just the songwriting too, like, I don't know if it's a total collaboration or if there's someone in particular, but like Mexico comes across as like multiple different songs, but all sewn together yeah. in this very like planned way. So I just think that song's killer. And, you Thank know, you. again, like, I just wanted to ask again about that. Like if there's any story behind the, the songwriting or any inspiration for that. Um, yeah, yeah we, we write a lot of songs together, especially the new stuff. Um, but that one was one that I, I wrote most of the words and kind of came up with the parts and we stitched them together uh, as a group. But um, yeah, I mean, they just, it's one of those things. That was one of those ones that just fell right into my lap and I was lucky enough to be able to jot it all down quick enough to <laughs> yeah, a couple of feelings and all, boom, you got a song. Yeah, so, it went through many, yeah. many iterations and it finally, yes. we finally landed on the weirdest one by far, which yeah. is cool. <laughs> It oh kind of, yeah. yeah it was fun trying to like it was like there's like three distinct sections in that song and we just kind of repeat it back to back and we were i don't know it was just an interesting way to think about writing that one versus just like your normal like verse chorus bridge sort of thing it was like we're having like an a section a b section a c section and then we're gonna yeah. do it again but like a little differently you know so yeah. it was just kind of fun to play with that still, uh, some confusion in the band to this day when somebody says oh let's just play that chorus it's like which one's <laughs> yeah, no, <we're> not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not not sure which one you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs>